Hello Church and Easter blessings to you. During the month of May, we have invited four amazing preachers to lead us in worship in order to celebrate the 100th anniversary of a groundbreaking sermon preached here from our very pulpit. It was delivered by a former pastor, Dr. Harry Emerson Fostig. The month of May promises to be very exciting for us in worship, but I specifically want to invite you to an event that will take place not on Sunday morning, but on Saturday, May 14th, as we welcome Professor of History, Dr. Brad Longfield. I've invited David Pulse, our church member and church archivist, to tell you a little bit more about it. David is also a PhD student in American history, and he specializes in New York history in the 19th century. I hope you can join us. Hello, I'm David Poltz, a member of First Presbyterian Church. Many of you know my work as church archivist. My interest in our long and fascinating history began back in the 1990s when I organized an effort to create a plaque dedicated to one of our most important pastors of the 1920s, Harry Emerson Fosdick. Uh, First Church will be celebrating the ministry of Fosdick with a preaching series beginning May 1st. Fosdick became Associate Minister for Preaching in 1919 following the merger of two other congregations with First Church. And Fosdick was by denomination a Baptist and his popularity and reputation as an effective and dynamic preacher at that time had been growing. With the dynamic increase in membership that resulted from the merger, uh, First Church saw an opportunity to choose a minister whose progressive views spoke to the uncertainties of the post-World War I era. During his tenure, Fosdick drew overflowing attendance that packed the sanctuary every Sunday. Many who couldn't get a seat stood outside where loudspeakers were set up. The crowd often overflowed onto Fifth Avenue. Fosdick's brand of progressive theology and pastoral concern found resonance with many whose faith had been shaken by the war and by the social upheavals of the early 20th century. Uh, For Fosdick, the orthodox uh, Protestantism of the early 19th century or the later 19th century failed to speak to the concerns of the new era. And, And on May 21, 1922, he preached a sermon titled, Shall the Fundamentalists Win? It was, in essence, a plea for tolerance between those in the Protestant world who clung to a literal belief in the inerrancy of the Bible, uh, the virgin birth, and other fundamentals, and more progressive views that reinterpreted the Bible in light of the new knowledge of science uh, and biblical scholarship. The sermon became controversial when Fosdick gave permission to a friend and publicist named Ivy Lee to send copies to every pastor within the Presbyterian Church. Um, But instead of reducing tensions within the denomination, they increased, producing calls for Fosdick to resign. Fosdick had always been well-liked at First Church, and he remained so, but the pressures and criticism coming from the conservative wing of the denomination over his brand of theology had become so great that for the good of the congregation, he resigned his pastorate in October of 1924. Next month, marks the 100th anniversary of the preaching of Fosdick's Shall the Fundamentalists Win? It is an important commemoration because I think it speaks to the heart of one's personal faith, the ability, the necessity to ask questions and to seek answers regarding how the Bible speaks to us today. There will be four invited preachers during this month-long celebration, but I would like to especially draw your attention to Saturday, May 14, when Bradley J. Longfield, professor of church history at Dubuque Theological Seminary, will give a lecture at 11 a.m. in the church parlor. Professor Longfield is author of The Presbyterian Controversy, Fundamentalists, Modernists, and Moderates. I strongly encourage you to consider attending what promises to be a stimulating and enlightening event. There will be a question and answer session afterward during which lunch will be served. Reservations are not needed, and I hope to see you there.